Эй-ю! Эй-ю! Сейчас я уйду. What's the matter? Well, you know, it's this biology textbook. It's so boring. What do you want to be when you grow up? I thought you want to be a biologist. I do, you know. I want to study dolphins and porpoises in the wild. But... But what? Well, you know, how could I possibly study them when I can't swim fast enough to keep up with them? Hey man, there's no need for that. Have you not heard of a thing called static acoustic monitoring? This here is a technique developed for usage in dolphins and porpoise by Dr. Anna Nutila and her colleagues. It is used to record the acoustic signals so that inferences on their behavior can be made from the playback. I get it. So they stick some hydrophones in the water, listen to dolphin and porpoise signals, and then answer some really cool questions about their behavioral ecology. Not so fast, Sony Jim. There's a whole lot of methodological issues that gotta be addressed first. Uh, yeah. Like, um, would they need to know species acoustic signal ranges first? Well, not exactly. You'll see many captive studies have already established these ranges. The real issues to resolve was the fine-tuning of the CPOD device, so that they could be used to detect sounds within the whole frequency range of the signals. Then when the sounds are played back, they need to differentiate signals that have come from different distances or animal orientations and take into account behavioral correlations with signal frequency before the implications are made. Oh, so do different signals, uh, do dolphins and porpoises use different signals for different behaviors? I think you're starting to get it, boy. So what cool stuff did they discover about dolphin and porpoise ecology with these methods? Well, one cool thing they found in Cardigan Bay that dolphins and porpoise use similar spatial areas, but at different times of the day, year, and sea level. This suggests an increased interspecific competition for food or space or both. Another thing they found, by combining with visual observation from the coast, they found an increased detection success when dolphins were traveling in groups. Wow, but why were they groups more easily detectable than individuals? Could it be because dolphins are social and then so more likely to be signaling in groups than when alone? Damn my man, I think you'll get it now. Thanks mate, it's all so clear to me now. I'm going to get out of there and start recording dolphin and porpoise sounds. And that means I can burn the book. Yeah, burn the book, burn the book. No, no, no. Don't you get it? Y'all got to work and y'all got to study. Ain't nobody going to employ ragamuffin like you unless you get the qualification first. Ja, I guess you're right. Yeah, cheers, mate.